hello let's start i will share the screen now is the slides visible okay so welcome to week 5 assignments of uh, introductory organic chemistry August 2024, my Professor Harina Chakrapani and Professor Niraja Deshaputre, myself Anisha Suresh, PMR of TFO, this course from IIT Bombay. So coming to the summary of uh, week 5 module, in this session, uh, week, uh, sir have discussed regarding enols and enolates, followed by the molecular orbital picture of enols and enolates and then reactions of enols and enolates. So this is the keto form of acetone. When we abstract the proton, when we abstract this proton of acetone, then it will lead to a formation of this enol form of acetone by reorganization. Like if we abstract this with base, it will reorganize in this fashion and we will get this enol form of acetone. So uh, the keto form is comparatively more stable than the enol form of acetone. And the reason for this is the typical bond strength that we can see from this. So for the keto form, CH bond uh, is having a bond strength of 440 kilojoule per mole and the pi bond that is C double bond O is having a bond strength of 720 kilojoule per mole. And enol form, it is having the OH bond strength 500 kilojoule per mole, and the C double bond C pi bond 620 pi bond uh, kilojoule per mole. And if we take the sum of these two bond strength for the keto form, it is 1160 kilojoule per mole, and for the enol form, it is 1120 kilojoule per mole. So comparatively, this enol form is less stable because uh, the bond strength is approximately 40 kilojoule per mole less strength having less strength so this is because the combination of the c double bond c double bond and the oh single bond is less stable than the combination of c double bond o double bond and the ch single bond that is why the keto form is more stable than the enol form of acetone and any other ketones in fact now, uh, coming to the evidence of formation of phenols. So, we are having the keto form of 1 phenyl propan 1 ohm, and um, it can lead to formation of this enol form in small quantity. That is why the equilibrium is mostly directed to this direction. So, how can we determine that this enol form is generating? For that, we can use D2O plus d2o as the medium so uh, d2o can lead to formation of d plus od minus and um, it will undergo enolization od minus can abstract this proton it can le uh, lead to uh, reorganization in this fashion and finally abstraction of d plus and once it will reorganize it will return to the keto form and we will get instead of proton we will have deuterium in place of proton so when we see nmr or mass spec we can uh, find uh, an extra m plus one peak thus we can uh, determine that this have undergone this enolization and then insertion of this deuterium to the ketone and since it is having one more enolizable proton, so again uh, this base can abstract this proton and it can reorganize leading to formation of this enolate. And then once it will return to the keto form, instead of the proton, deuterium will incorporate into the system and we have two deuterium in place of the two protons. So thus we can um, find that uh, enols are forming in this reaction as the intermediates. Okay, so from NMR, we can see previously uh, three peak, uh, like 
this will be showing uh, one peak CH3. This CH2 might be showing one peak in NMR and this uh, aromatic peaks will also be showing in NMR. But uh, when deuterium is incorporated, deuterium is NMR silent and these two uh, protons which were previously appearing in the NMR of uh, this one phenyl propen one on will be disappearing and thus we can uh, get an evidence of the formation of phenols. Is it clear? Now coming to acid and base catalyzed stenolization. So this is how acid catalyzed stenolization is taking place. So in the presence of acid, it will combine with uh, H2O and H3O plus will form in the presence of H2O plus H plus will lead to formation of this H3O plus. And uh, this lone pair of uh, kit, uh, this oxygen can abstract the proton leading to formation of this protonated uh, ketone and now this will ma uh, make the abstraction of this proton more facile. So water can abstract this proton lead to formation of this enol. So this is how enol is getting formed in acid catalyzed like acid catalyzed condition and in base catalyzed condition how enolization is taking place means this OH minus it can abstract this enolizable proton that is adjacent to the uh, carbonyl group and this proton once it is abstracted this uh, uh, negative charge it will in, uh, delocalize into the system and this O minus will be formed and this O minus it can abstract uh, a proton from water leading to formation of the enol. Is the mechanism clear? This is base catalyzed enolization of an aldehyde. And now coming to molecular orbital picture. So here, uh, sir, so have compared the allyl anion and the um, enolate. So this is how allyl anion. This uh, this is what is allyl anion, which is having one, two, three carbons, and one of the carbon is having a double bond, and the n carbon is having a negative charge. So this can delocalize, and it it will result in the formation of this species as well. So this will exist in this form. The negative charge is delocalized over the three carbons. So here this is the psi 1 of this allyl anion and this is the psi 2 where one node is there. So this psi 2 is the reactive homo um, because this is the highest occupied molecular orbital. And now coming to Enolate anion. So enolate anion will be having an oxygen instead of one carbon when we are comparing it with the allyl anion. Now when it is delocalizing it will result in the formation of the species. Here uh, this is the psi 1 where major contribution is coming from the oxygen compared to that of the carbon and in the side 2 the major contribution is coming from that of the carbon and minor contribution from the oxygen and here the side 2 is the reactive homo. So this is the molecular orbital picture of the enolate anion and here the carbon this n carbon will be the most reactive. Now coming to reactions of enols and enolates so in acid medium when acetone is treated with bromine in the presence of acetic acid, it will lead to formation of bromoacetone by the formation of an enol. So we can see in the presence of acetic acid, this oxygen will be abstracting the proton and will lead to formation of uh, OH plus here. Then this, um, this, this will be acidic proton. Uh, this proton will lose and this will delocalize in this fashion leading to formation of the enol and once this oxygen lone pair will fall back this double bond will go and attack on the bromine bromide ion will leave and it will lead to formation of this bromoacetone with protonated form and once uh, the proton is loose we will get this bromoacetone so this is the mechanism for um, formation of bromoacetone from acetone and in the presence of base 
instead of acid if we are using base catalyzed enolization here uh, instead of this bromoacetone uh, the reaction will be uncontrolled and we will uh, lead, it will lead to formation of bromoform and um, this uh, acetate o minus plus chbr3 this will be formed in base catalyzed condition so this similar mechanism is used in iodoform test so here in iodoform test we are used for identifying the presence of methyl ketones so when a methyl ketone is there in the presence of iodine and naoh it will lead to formation of this uh, CI3 that group will be coming and once NaOH will be added again then it will lead to formation of this um, uh, acid and then iodoform it will be giving yellow color. This iodoform will be giving yellow color thus it is an indication of the presence of medial ketone. So the mechanism will be like uh, similar to uh, this one so here. three alpha hydrogens will be there so the NaOH so the OH minus will be acting as the base it will lead to formation of enolate or O minus double bond two hydrogens will be there and once this is falling back it will abstract this iodine I, um, iodide will be leaving and it will lead to formation of R double bond of hydrogen hydrogen iodine similarly two more times this sort of uh, formation of enolate will be taking place and abstraction of iodine will be taking place and it will lead to formation of r double bond of i i i now there is uh, no uh, proton for abstraction so this oh minus will be uh, undergoing nucleophilic addition it will lead to formation of tetrahedral intermediate like this R O minus CI3 OH and once this is falling back the CI3 uh, will be leaving as it is a more stable conjugate base and it will lead to formation of R double bond o OH and CHI3 clear so this is how iodoform test is working this is the mechanism behind the iodoform test this is clear right now coming to the last point that was discussed in um, week 5 that is aldol condensation reaction so the aldol condensation reaction is like um, there will be um, a group that can undergo enolization and lead to formation of enolate ion and once this is falling back it can go and attack to the unenolized aldehyde and it will lead to formation of this beta hydroxy aldehyde this is alpha this is beta uh, beta position hydroxy will be there so beta hydroxy aldehyde so again you know uh, so it will lead to formation of the aldol product and again there is alpha hydrogen so the alpha hydrogen will be abstracted it will lead to formation of enolate again and it will undergo a e1cb mechanism that we have studied in the last lecture so this will uh, when it is coming back this uh, double bond will shift to here and this oh will be eliminated leading to formation of alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde so this is the mechanism of aldol condensation reaction and for a reference, you can follow Clayton Organic Chemistry, Chapter 21, 26 and 27. Okay. Now coming to the first question of um, week 5 assignment. Identify the major product of the following reaction. So this is our starting material and it is treated with uh, LDA in presence of THF as the solvent. And then it is quenched with this uh, compound one two three 
1 1 chloro 3 iodo propane then what will be the product that is formed c yeah it is a right answer so lda since uh, it is a bulky base it will be abstracting proton from this side leading to formation of the enolate here and once it is falling back uh, the car uh, once this O minus will be falling back, this uh, C double bond C will be going and attacking on this position. Since iodine is a better living group, it will be attacking at this position compared to this position. Compared to chlorine, uh, iodine, chlorine is a uh, less facile living group. So this is the mechanism. So this is the structure of LDA. LDA means lithium diisopropyl amide so this is lda so uh, this um, negative charge on the nitrogen will abstract this proton leading to formation of this enolate and once this enolate is falling back this double bond will go and attack at this carbon and this i uh, i minus which is a better living group it will remove leading to formation of this product is the mechanism clear Any doubts? Okay. So here, this is the major product that is forming. Now, coming to the next question. What will be the major product of the following alkylation reaction? So this is an amine sort of a system. Okay, imine will also act similar to that of the ketone. So it is treated with n-butyl lithium in presence of dry THF and then it is quenched with a alkyl bromide. So what will be the major product that is formed? Okay, let us see what is the major product that is forming. So here... This is the alpha hydrogen that is getting abstracted. So butyl lithium will abstract this proton leading to formation of this uh, enamine. And once this lone pair on the nitrogen will fall back, this double bond will go and attack on this um, alkyl bromide leading to elimination of uh, Br- and it will lead to formation of this as the major product. Clear? And LIBR will be the side product. So the major product will be option A. Is the mechanism clear? Okay. Now coming to the next question. The major product X formed in the following reaction is so here a cyclohexanone derivative is given and it is treated with one equivalent of LDA in presence of THF and it is quenched with this alkyl bromide. So what is the X that is forming here? B. Okay, let us see the mechanism. So since LDA is a bulky base, as you have seen, this is the structure of LDA. So th this is a bulky base. So here methyl is the, so this proton will be difficult to abstract as this is a bulky base. So LDA will be abstracting this alpha hydrogen leading to formation of the enolate. And once this enolate is falling back, it will go and attack at this position. Then this will shift here and this bromide will leave leading to formation of this product. Okay. This is similar to a allylic uh, bromide. So this is the major product that is formed in this reaction. Option B is the right answer. Is there any doubt regarding the mechanism?
Okay. Now coming to the next question. Which combination of carbonyl compounds give phenyl vinyl ketone by aldol condensation? So this is the product that is formed after aldol condensation reaction. So what are the starting materials that will lead to formation of this product after aldol condensation reaction? A. Yeah. So we can see how it is getting formed. So here in A, in A condition we are having acetophenone as a starting material. So it is having three alpha hydrogen. So the base will be abstracting one of the alpha hydrogen leading to formation of this enolate. And this enolate will be falling back and this carb, uh, this O minus will fall back. This carbon double C double bond C will go and attack on this formaldehyde leading to formation of this beta hydroxy ketone. Okay, then this, uh, huh, this O minus can abstract proton from this BH plus leading to formation of this compound beta hydroxy ketone. And then again a uh, alpha hydrogen is present in this. So this um, base will abstract that alpha hydrogen leading to formation of this enolate. And this will undergo a even CB sort of mechanism leading to formation of this product. Phenyl vinyl ketone. Okay. So the starting material is a uh, acetophenone and formaldehyde clear option a is the right answer is there any doubts okay Now coming to the next question, the stepwise synthesis to saccharin is given below. Predict the correct reactants P, Q and R. So we are having a, uh, we are having toluene, it is treated with P, we will get this compound and once it is treated with Q, we will get this compound and once it is treated with R, we will get this saccharin. So what is P, Q and R? See, yeah, we will see the uh, mechanism. So, toluene, once it is treated with this chlorosulfonic acid, it will undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction leading to formation of this two products. Okay? Uh, ortho as well as para. Then, when it is treated with NH3, uh, this uh, NH3 will be replacing chlorine and we will get this product. And then it can undergo oxidation. So any oxidizing reagents will work. So in our case, they have given KMnO4. KMnO4 is a good oxidizing reagent. So that will oxidize this um, methyl group into... It will oxidize the methyl group into a carbonyl group and this NH2 will attack on that. And again, it will oxidize uh, that alcohol that will be forming, leading to formation of the saccharin. Okay, so this will be the right answer. First, electrophilic aromatic substitution leading to formation of ortho as well as para product. Then the CO2, SO2 Cl, uh, when it is treated with ammonia, it will lead to formation of SO2 NH2. And in the presence of KMnO4, this methyl will oxidize and this NH2 will attack on that, leading to formation of this. First alcohol will be forming and again in uh, presence of KMnO4, it will undergo further oxidation, leading to formation of the amide. 
clear is there any doubts okay now coming to the next question identify the major product of the following condensation reaction so here we are having a um, cyclic amide and it is treated with nanh2 and methyl iodide it will be giving uh, one product and that product is further treated with lda and uh, ethyl bromide so here for our convenience they have given the pk of this proton uh, this nh proton is having a pk of 17 and this uh, alpha proton adjacent to the amide is having a pk of 30 so first uh, what um, so what will be the major product that will be formed after the two two steps b yeah so let us see the mechanism so as we have seen this is having a pk of 17 and here this protons is having a pk of 30 so when we are treating with this um, nanh2 that base will be abstracting first this proton this is acidic proton so that base will be abstracting this proton leading to formation of this compound okay now when the oxygen is falling back this will go and attack on the methyl iodide iodine will be leaving and it will lead to formation of this product okay now uh, next step is treating with lda when we are treating with lda it will be abstracting this proton now this there is no proton here okay so uh, lda will be abstracting this proton which is also acidic having a pk of 30 it will lead to formation of this enolate and once this oxygen will fall this lone pair of oxygen will fall this carbon uh, carbon double bond will go and attack on this ethyl bromide bromide will be leaving leading to formation of this product this is the final product that will be forming so uh, first step we will get this as the product and in the second step we will get this product clear any doubt here the pk of the protons is affecting the reactivity okay so as they have given the pk of this hydrogen is lesser compared to that of this so uh, in first the base will be abstracting this proton and this uh, anion that will be forming will undergoing reaction with methyl iodide after that that product um, then uh, this is the only proton uh, acidic protons it is having so the lda will be abstracting this proton and then that enolate will be attacking on ethyl bromide and we will be getting this as the final product so option b is the right answer is this question clear okay now coming to question 7 idoform reaction is a confirmatory test for compounds having coch3 ch3 conh2 cooh so we have discussed uh, while we were discussing the summary of week 5 modules. So idoform reaction is a confirmatory test for compounds having COCH3, methyl ketones we have discussed. Okay. So this is the idoform test. So when there is methyl ketone, when it is treated with I2 and NaOH, this methyl group is replaced by Ci3. And then when it is further treated with NaOH, it will lead to formation of this carboxylic acid and iodoform. Like a nucleophilic sort of addition reaction will be taking place. So this reaction is often called the iodoform reaction. Iodoform was an older name for triiodomethane just as chloroform is still used for trichloromethane. It is one of the rare cases where nucleophilic substitution at a carbonyl carbon results in the cleavage of a carbon-carbon single bond. 
ओके मोस्टली कार्बन कार्बन बोन्स आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बट हियर द आइडोफॉर्म दैट इज फॉर्म द पी के ऑफ द आइडोफॉर्म दैट इज फॉर्म डज लेस कंपेर्ड टू दैट ऑफ पी के ऑफ वाटर दैट इज वाई आइडोफॉर्म इज फॉर्मिंग सो दिस इज द मेकेनिजम दिस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेन वी वर डिस्कसिंग द समरी सो द hydroxide will abstract the proton it will lead to formation of enolate here they have not shown the enolate they have just shown the anion so that anion will be going and attacking on the iodine uh, i minus will be leaving leading to formation of this compound again there are two more hydrogens uh, or two more protons so the oh minus will be abstracting the ne next proton it will lead to formation of the anion or enolate enolate can also form okay the anion can rearrange and it can lead to formation of the enolate then once the enolate is falling back the anion will go and attack on the iodine leading to formation of here i2 and again there is one more proton so the oh minus will be abstracting that proton leading to formation of the enolate and that enolate will go and attack on the iodine so ci3 will be forming now again the oh can undergo nucleophilic addition to this uh, carbonyl compound leading to formation of this tetrahedral intermediate and once this o minus four backs ci3 will be ci3 minus will be removing and uh, that ci3 minus can abstract the proton from this uh, oh and it will lead to formation of iodoform and this carboxylate ion so this is the mechanism of uh, this iodoform reaction is this clear in all these cases there is formation of enolate this r c double bond o ch2 minus it can lead to formation of enolate by this mechanism okay so option a is the right answer is this clear okay now coming to the next question this is also a sort of aldol condensation reaction so we will call this mukeyama aldol condensation reaction so what is the final product of the given reaction occurring via the silyl enol ether intermediate so here when we are treating with triiodyl uh, amine and tms chloride first this proton will be abstracted by the triiodyl amine and this o minus will go and attack on tms chloride leading to formation of this silyl enol ether and in the presence of tcl4 uh, when it is treated with this benzaldehyde it will lead to formation of uh, which of this uh, given products b yeah we will see the mechanism so here silyl enol ether is formed and in the presence of ph ch2 and tcl4 this silyl ether of aldehyde aldo aldol will be formed like this will fall here and this will go and attack on the ph ch2 so it will lead to formation of this aldol and upon work up we will get this aldol product okay so this is the mechanism for making this um, more electrophilic this tcl4 will coordinate with the carbonyl group of this benzaldehyde and that will make this um, carbonyl carbon more electrophilic then this lone pair of oxygen will fall here and this carbon carbon double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon so this is the aldol addition step so it will lead to formation of this intermediate then the cl minus that is uh, removed from this tcl4 it can abstract this uh, silyl group so there is um, this uh, chloride minus uh, chloride chlorine fluorine any halogens will be having more affinity towards silicon so it will abstract the silicon and it will neutralize this uh, carbonyl carbon positive charge on the carbonyl carbon so it will lead to formation of this uh, intermediate now what will happen 
the ME3SI group is removed by the chloride ion. So that is what is happening here. Now, uh, this titanium alkoxide will be replaced by ME3SI group. So uh, here, this bond will break. It will go and attack on the silicon. The Cl- will be removing and this TiCl4 will regenerate and we will get this intermediate. Now, this upon workup, it will lead to formation of this aldol. So, uh, one important factor is Lewis acid. Here, the TiCl4 is the Lewis acid that we are using. It's needed to get silyl enol ethers to react. And the key step is an aldol attack of the silyl enol ether with the Lewis acid complex the electrophile. So, this is the key step that is taking place. The aldol addition step. Okay. Is the mechanism clear? This uh, chlorine, fluorine all, all can uh, bond uh, to silicon more easily. Um, maybe they are in the same, uh, chlorine will be coming in the same group of silicon uh, compared to oxygen. Maybe that is why it is having more affinity. Okay. So here the right answer is option B. Now coming to question number 9. Identify the final product of the following Rifomatsky reaction. So Rifomatsky reaction is also a sort of uh, aldol condensation reaction where uh, zinc is also zinc bromide uh, uh, sources also involved. Here we are having silyl enol either in case of mukiam aldol similarly in Rifomatsky reaction this sort of zinc intermediates uh, will also be involved so these are the starting materials that are given and upon acid workup what is the major product that is formed Yeah, C is the right answer. We will see what is the mechanism. So, this is the general mechanism for Rifomatsky reaction. So, when we are having a alpha alpha halo ketone or something, then this uh, thing can get inserted as we have uh, as it is shown here, leading to formation of this thing bromide sort, uh, sort of intermediate and now this ketone will this ketone um, ketone can uh, attack on this uh, zinc uh, which is uh, a metal then this bond can shift here and this will be going and attacking on the zinc so this sort of intermediate will be forming this is a six uh, six membered sort of intermediate and now what will be happening Now, this OZNX double bond R. So, this is the intermediate formed after this reaction. Now, we are having our electrophile. Now, what will happen? This will form a six membered sort of intermediate, and this OZN bond will break this carbon carbon bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon and this o will 
attack at the zinc leading to formation of this intermediate so this is represented by the six membered transition state okay so after this reaction as shown by the arrow pushing this o sedan bond will break this c double bond c bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon and this uh, c double bond of bond will break and o sedan bond will be forming so we will get this intermediate four now what will happen this oxygen will abstract the proton leading to formation of this intermediate and once x minus that is any halide source will be coming and attacking on the sink this will remove and we will get this beta hydroxy carbonyl compound okay so this is the general mechanism of reformatsky reaction so in our case this is the starting materials that is given so here what will happen this oxygen will go and attack on the zinc the zinc carbon bond will break and it will shift here and this carbon carbon double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl leading to formation of this intermediate okay now what will happen this oxygen set and bond will break and it will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon and once this carbonyl will fall back this oet will be removing leading to formation of this product so here when we count 1 2 3 4 5 five membered ring will be forming and set and br2 will be removing clear okay so this is the mechanism of uh, reformatsky reaction that we have discussed and we will be getting this option c as the major product is this question clear Now coming to the next question. Categorize each of the following molecules as a hemiacetal, hemiketal, acetal, ketal, hydrate of an aldehyde or hydrate of a ketone. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. What it will be? We have discussed regarding this in the last uh, lecture, I think. What is semi-acetal, what is semi-ketal, acetal, ketal and all we have discussed. B. So, as we have seen in the last lecture, so when we are having an aldehyde and then uh, a alcohol is getting added to that aldehyde, it will lead to formation of hemiacetal. Okay. And this uh, OH, when it is replaced by OR, it will lead to formation of acetal. And in place of uh, means... Um, in place of aldehyde, if we are having a ketone, it is known as hemiacetal from ketone or we can call it hemiketal. And when we are having a cyclic hemiacetal, it is known as lactol. And when we having uh, this OH replaced by OR, it is known as ketal instead of acetal. Okay. And when water is getting added to aldehyde or ketone, it will lead to formation of hydrate. Clear? So here we are having a ketone. Voice not audible. Let 
me check one second okay so here this is a ketone and when uh, methanol is getting added it will lead to formation of this oh ome so this is known as hemi ketol right and here this is a hemi ketal and next this is a starting aldehyde and when two molecules of ethanol is getting added we will get oet oet h so here acetal is forming this is not hemiacetal is it will be acetal because uh, one of the oh that will be forming in the tetrahedral intermediate is converted into oet so this is acetal and here next one it will be ch3 1 2 acetaldehyde and to this oet is getting added and it is leading to formation of this ch3 oh h oet so this is hemi acetal okay since it is aldehyde it is acetal and since one OH is there, it is known as hemiacetal. And the next one, this upon protection with OH, OH, ethylene glycol, it will lead to formation of this. First, this will be adding. And again, this OH will also be adding, leading to formation of this. This is ketal or we can call acetal of ketone. Right? Ketal or acetal of ketone next one is op oh double bond o and water is adding and it will lead to formation of oh oh so this is hydrate this is what is known as hydrate so as we can see the first one is hemiketal hemiketal the second one is acetal third one is hemiacetal fourth one is ketal or acetal of uh, ketone and the final one is hydrate so option b will be the right answer clear right Is it clear?
any doubts okay now coming to the next question identify the missing reactants or products in the following acetal protecting group reaction so in the first reaction we have given this compound and it is treated with ethylene glycol in the presence of acid and what will be the product that we will be getting and in the second case we have been given the product and it is treated with um, H plus. So, what is the starting material that is used? A. Yeah. A is the right answer. So, in the presence of ethylene glycol, this ketone will get protonated and this um, will go and attack on the ketone. Then, uh, then it will lead to formation of OH. Then proton transfer will take place leading to formation of OH2 plus O OH. I will represent this as R group. Okay. Now again, this will add on to here and this water will be getting removed. We will and this upon deprotonation, we will get this as the major product. Fine. And this is the product that is given. So according to this mechanism, we can trace back to this as the starting material. So here there should be a ketone and then ethylene glycol can be used for this protection. So this upon undergoing the similar sort of mechanism, it will lead to formation of this product. Clear? So this is the right answer. Is this clear? Any doubts? Okay. Now coming to question number 12. What is the percentage distribution of the elimination products formed in the reaction given below? So here HBr elimination will be taking place in pres um, presence of this uh, basic medium. So uh, there is possibility of getting two products 1 and 2. So what will be the percentage distribution of these two products? Option D. What could be the reason? So NaOET, it can abstract this proton OET minus and this Br will be removing. So we will get this product and when it will be abstracting this proton, it can lead to formation of this product. But since um, this double bond is coming at the bridgehead position, it is violating the Brett's rule. So this product is not stable at all. That is why we are getting 100% of this product only. Okay. So, Brett's rule is an empirical observation that states double bond can't be placed at the bridgehead of a bridged ring system unless the ring is large enough. This we have seen in the last lecture. So, bridgehead carbon cannot attain planarity due to the strain. So, we can place double bond there. As double bond makes this molecules sp2 hybridized which should be planar. So, since this is the bridgehead position, so the... Uh, double bond when it is coming here it cannot attain the planarity that is the reason why 
bridgehead carbon cannot have a double bond adjacent to that unless it is a larger ring okay so that is the reason why we are not getting this product we are solely getting uh, one as a uh, sole product okay one will be the only product that we are getting upon elimination of this hbr is the mechanism clear okay so that's all for today if you are having any doubts regarding any of the questions or anything regarding what is discussed in this module please feel free to ask there are no further questions uh, then we can uh, wind up today's session thank you all for joining see you next sunday thank you